We are starting to record our webinar. So welcome everyone to the fourth webinar in the Infinity webinar series. Uh, this is our virtual solar tour regarding the Center County Solar Co-op. So we're gonna get started. Share my screen. How am I presenting without not presenting in Teams? Oops. I'm gonna open that and then we'll get that started. Can everybody see the presentation? All right. Welcome to our virtual solar tour. We're glad that you're here. Just wanna go over our agenda for a little bit. We're gonna talk about event goals, our sponsors and host intros. What does solar look like in Center County for 2022? What is a solar cooperative? What is different about Infinity's Solar Cooperative? We'll have a Kahoot quiz and then we'll review ways that you can make a difference in your community, what sort of discounts and referral benefits you get for attending this webinar, and award our $250 gift card to a local business of your choice, or you can donate it to your favorite nonprofit, which was a option that we got to see this last time. So thank you. So our goals tonight are really to learn about solar and climate progress in the center region, describe the details of our cooperative and how that relates to those solar goals and learn how you can participate in the cooperative specifically or become a solar champion, uh, increasing the amount of solar in our region. Uh, first, I wanna introduce Jason. Jason Grattini is the vice president at Infinity he likes to say jack of all trades and master of none. I'd probably disagree with that. Uh, master of a bunch of things, but uh, is very active in our community regarding solar and being a solar champion in Center County. So he'll speak to that a little bit. You wanna say hi, Jason? Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Looking forward to talking to you. We also have Andy Porter who lives off grid, started working for Infinity after his experience procuring and installing his own solar system. He loves to talk about solar, uh, super passionate about what we do. You wanna say hi, Andy? Hey everybody, friends of the past and friends that I have not met yet. And we also have Cam Willison with us today. Uh, started at Infinity uh, probably one, to two uh, solar tours ago, I uh, started just prior to COVID. Two big passions are mountain biking and helping people explore their solar options in that order. Thank you, Cam. That always puts a smile on my face. I'm gonna say hi, Cam. Hey there, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out tonight. Hopefully we can all learn a little bit more and have a good time together. And then of course, we're really grateful for our sponsors. Uh, our sponsors fluctuate from quarter to quarter of, of who's really interested in these topics, but I think it's worth uh, calling out that Penns Valley Conservation Association has been a great supporter to Infinity and to solar in our region, so thank you to them. Uh, we'll talk more about that organization later. Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light, Penn Environment, and State College Young Professionals have been great supporters of increasing solar and sustainability in our region for various reasons. So we'll introduce you to their, those organizations later in the presentation, but we wanted to say thank you first and foremost for their support. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Jason. Thanks, Candice. Really appreciate you hosting this tonight and, and putting the effort in to, to make all this happen. Uh, great to see everybody on the participant thread here. A uh, lot of 
uh, familiar names uh, on the other side there. Uh, some past and some future Infinity clients there, as well as just friendly faces I know from around the community. So uh, good to see y'all. Uh, you know, free flow in question answers. You know, as they pop up, uh, we'll get them get them answered here and there during the Q and A session. Uh, but we're going to cover. You know, what you're all here for is to learn about you know what Infinity is doing to promote a solar cooperative uh, here uh, in Center County this winter. Uh, but to understand and uh, show how we're we're getting to that point, uh, we got to understand you know the actions of the past year that we've taken here in Center County. Uh, so we're going to talk a little about the climate action planning work that's been done, taking a look at some regional solar data, uh, reviewing solar initiatives, and then you know after I make you wait four slides, uh, we'll talk about the solar co-op that we put together, you know, this year here in 2022. Oh, do I click Candace or do you click? Probably should have worked that one out. I'm good. Yeah, you can just say slide or yeah. if I see an awkward pause, I will move forward. <laughs> All right. So much of the reason we're here tonight uh, with this effort uh, stems from the efforts and the leadership taken, uh, believe it or not, at the local government level here in the center region. Uh, we have a very proactive, uh, very environmentally friendly <laughs> team of municipalities and authorities around the region, uh, led by you know our center region council of governments. Uh, in November of 2021, uh, the COG and the uh, municipalities that make up the COG adopted a climate action and adaptation plan, uh, which you know is the culmination of several years of hard work by COG staff and develop and planners. Uh, if you have not looked through the climate action and adapt adaptation plan, uh, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, the link is at the bottom here, crcog.net backslash C-A-A-P. Uh, a really well put together website, uh, great executive summary, lots of infographics, lots of data. Uh, what we know is, you know, this work uh, builds upon the greenhouse gas inventory that's been conducted here in the center region across the municipalities. Uh, the cap outlines a target reduction, greenhouse gas reduction of 45% by 2030. Part of that greenhouse gas reduction includes reducing building energy consumption uh, by 30% for homes and 25% for businesses and transitioning to renewable energy to power 10% of homes and 5% of businesses. Uh, you know, these, the goals and initiatives outlined in the cap are a big reason why we're here today. And I think we're very much riding on the coattails of some of these local efforts. Slide. So the center region, the Council of Governments is also begin pulling together data here in the center region of solar development. Uh, not the best map, but if you go onto the website, you can see it a little more clearer here. Uh, but by pulling together building permit data across the, the Council of Government region, uh, you can see we're starting to put together a map of all the solar projects that have been developed in the center region. Uh, really good stuff there, take a deeper dive. Off to the right here, construction cost uh, over time uh, is very much in line with Infinity's business in solar over the past decade. You know, 10 years ago, back in 2010, were the days of the PA Sunshine Grant Program. Solar was in its first wave uh, as a viable technology, uh, you know, in this modern iteration. Uh, so there is a little bit of boom and solar development dies off a little bit come 2013, 2014, uh, as the PA Sunshine program goes away. Uh, but ever since my colleagues, Andy and Cam have been here since the 2015, 2016 neighborhood, you can really see that interest in solar uh, has grown and solar development has increased as well. There's many reasons for that. Uh, market viability, general awareness, general acceptance of the technology, uh, mainly, uh, lower prices are a big reason for that. So 
And if 2021 were on this graph here, it would probably also exceed that 6 million. Infinity has seen substantial growth in the solar industry over the past several years, uh, as has the region, uh, which includes all the other peer in installation companies, engineering companies, designers, uh, everybody that makes it happen on the ground. Uh, before the question pops up, I cannot ex explain the data anomaly uh, that you see that little dip there. You will have to inquire with the center region on that one. And then the little graph below that just shows the breakdown by municipality. You know, so for those of you living in College Township, kudos, you developed a lot of solar. Slide. So let's talk a little bit about what's gone on really in the past year and a half, two years, uh, or maybe we should just call it post, post COVID for the most part. So the first thing I'd like to point out is creation of a solar database. You know, I just hit the, the highlight graphics with you there. Uh, if you want to dig in a little bit deeper, you can go to the Center Region Council of Government's website again and look up their solar page. Uh, you'll see a lot of these regional uh, initiatives explained in a uh, little more detail there. Uh, the Intergovernmental Solar Power Purchase Group is a group that I am honored to be a participant of, uh, not as a representative of Infinity, uh, but as a State College Borough Water Authority, uh, as a board member there. Uh, this is a pretty impressive initiative. It's a group of 20 governmental agencies actually working together, uh, looking to offset uh, all of their energy with renewable energy. Uh, we are in the process of pooling together uh, and looking to develop a solar power purchasing agreement to both save money and reduce carbon offset or carbon emissions. Probably the earliest uh, measure we took in Center County was at the commissioner level uh, where we adopted CPACE or Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy. Uh, CPACE uh, is just a financing program that was launched in 2018 to help us business owners access to low interest funding to develop solar. Uh, it's an alternative financing mechanism uh, that can be used if you, uh, you know, don't want to take out a line of credit or a loan or something like that. So that's a program that has to be adopted at the county level. So in Pennsylvania, you'll see that it's not every county that has it. Um, you know, we are the only county in our little central swath of the state, I believe, that has adopted it. You see it more out in Allegheny, certainly Southeast PA. I believe Erie has adopted. There might be a dozen or 15 or so. Oh, very nice. Thank you for that reminder. Sustainable Energy Fund has a webinar tomorrow. Uh, on more information on CPACE. So if you are a business owner or know a business owner and want to utilize CPACE, uh, that is a really great, uh, great program to learn more about. Soul Smart, uh, I think I am uh, legally obligated to give nothing but kudos to our local code agency here uh, and uh, kind of give them a pat on the back for some forward thinking here. Soul Smart is a program that was developed by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, and in a nutshell, it's really meant to make going solar easier uh, for developers and for homeowners, business owners. Uh, without taking it too far behind the curtain, uh, the soft cost side of solar is probably higher than it needs to be. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the permitting process, the zoning process, and the utility interconnection process. Uh, so, you know, part of what Soul Smart can do is help to streamline that permitting process uh, so we can save some time, save our customers some money, and get to permit, which allows us to do the installation faster than we currently can do. At the local government level, uh, we've seen actual uh, boots on the ground doing projects, you know, the, the biggest of which is the University Area Joint Authority. Uh, which is our sewer authority. You would not expect a sewer authority in central Pennsylvania to be a leader in renewable energy, uh, but they are, and they have gained statewide recognition for it. Uh, if you are not familiar uh, with the organization State Impact Pennsylvania, uh, and Dan, he writes there, you know, WPSU uh, statewide correspondent for, for or 
Public Radio, did a really great piece on the University Area Joint Authority probably about a year ago or so. Uh, worth looking up, worth seeing what Corey Miller, their executive director, uh, and his team have brought to the region. I think they're sitting on about eight, eight megawatts of solar, uh, and you can't really see it because UAJA is, is tucked in the valley uh, back behind Shiloh Road there. Uh, I'm sure if you ever want to take a tour of the sewer plant, you can see the solar plant as well. Uh, who else we got here? We got Ferguson Township is a project that Infinity is just finishing up. You can see the image on the left there. Ferguson Township has built a lead gold, I believe, public works garage. And the icing on top uh, is about 106 kilowatt solar array uh, that is close to operation there. I believe Mr. Cam went and took this aerial image with his drone. Thank you, Cam. I appreciate that. Uh, the State College Borough Water Authority, uh, they are building a new water treatment plant off Nixon Road. Uh, they are putting a 70 kilowatt solar array on that roof there as part of you know, their initiative to keep incorporating renewable energy and purchase renewable energy. Of course, we have the Center County Correctional Facility that put in a large system uh, on their property off the Benner Pike. And Milheim Borough has did a couple hundred kilowatts uh, on some municipal lands out in Milheim there. So you can see these organizations are not just supporting it uh, with their words, but people are actually making the investment, supporting uh, local installers such as ourselves, uh, putting their money where their mouth is. Coming soon, Santa Region is issuing a solar guide uh, website that is a really nice landing page for anybody curious on the steps it takes to go solar. Uh, so if you don't follow uh, your local government agencies or, or COG on social media, you know, there's probably a reason to do so. Nothing too exciting, uh, but at least you're, you're first to know when these things come out. And so I say all that to say, uh, this is why we're here tonight. We're talking about the solar cooperative model and all these things, the support that these organizations have provided uh, has led us to launching this program for 2022. Slide. So this is not the first time Infinity has tried uh, a solar cooperative, but uh, riding the coattails of the past year, uh, this is easily the most organized we have been uh, to do so. We've done some informal buy and bulk programs, marketing campaigns, things like that. Uh, you know, and, and this one we're hoping to be our, our most successful, you know, because the effort that we're putting in here. But what is a solar cooperative? Well, I mean, if I had to sum it up myself, it's a group of like-minded neighbors who decide to go solar at the same time to reduce project costs. You know, it's, it's the, the Costco model, the Sam's Club model, buy in bulk, uh, you save a few pennies. Uh, a good solar cooperative, it should be a win-win-win for everybody involved, for the customer, for the contractor, and the community. And we'll talk a little bit about, about each one of those here. Uh, the reason solar cooperatives exist and the reason why Infinity is making a big push uh, this time around is because it's good for us too. It's winter. Uh, you know, winter is a slow time of the year, and we would very much like to be backfilling our schedule uh, with projects. You know, even though we're seeing a solar boom and, and have the work, it, it's nice to fill in the gaps, you know, with, with a big project like this. Slide. So some of what the program entails that we're doing here. Uh, we're offering tiered pricing based on system size for all Center County homeowners uh, through the winter here. Uh, you know, a big aim is to help accelerate uh, achieving our regional climate goals. I think a program like this and other things going on in the region will get us to that 45% energy reduction goal by 2030 and that 5 and 10% renewable energy goal. Uh, Lickety split for all uh, acting together. And you know, for us, we wanted to use this to continue to develop and grow our local skilled labor. Uh, case you haven't heard, uh, pandemic's been rough. Uh, skilled labor in general is at an all-time low. Uh, so you know, what companies like Infinity are doing uh, is really recruiting students from local tech schools, high schools, people in different trades, uh, and training them in the field to become solar installers. Uh, it's 
right now it's really the best way to grow this labor force in Pennsylvania. So when we have a program like this, uh, we can really, you know, get a good head start on training some of these uh, younger folks, some of these people that were previously masons, HVAC installers, framers, you name it, you know, people that know how to work the trades, but get them versed in installing solar. Slide. So there's some perks to the program aside from cost savings. Uh, there, we're doing extended workmanship warranties. Uh, we've increased our referral bonus program. We are doing price matching, apples to apples price matching. Uh, we're providing a local service with trained technicians. Uh, and you know it's always good to throw in there that uh, a program like this does support local business and local employees. Uh, you know, I know everybody on this call here all lives in the center region. Well, Andy's out in the valley, that's still center county. Uh, but you know, everybody in Infinity is here in Center County uh, that works out of our state college office here. So it's a really great opportunity for those with means uh, and interest in going solar to, to do the right thing and support a, a company that's doing, doing all they can to help this community grow. Who can participate in the co-op? Any homeowner in Center County, any business, we're not being picky. Uh, you know, your utility bill should show an address uh, in Center County. But that's it. Uh, you know, get the ball rolling before February 28th. Uh, that's kind of like the soft end of our co-op period here. Uh, we're trying to, to dovetail that with some other stuff going on in the region and align with our schedule going into the spring. Uh, but as of right now, February 28th, you know, if you're interested, you know, you should let us know. Slide. We've done a careful job uh, procuring the equipment that we specified on this project. Uh, again, pandemic materials are very hard to come by in addition to skilled labor. Uh, so what companies like ours have had to do is uh, spend a lot of capital to make sure we have all this stuff in stock and have the storage space to keep it in stock uh, so that we can deliver on our promises and our contracts to our customers. Uh, so for the solar cooperative. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many pallets we have stacked up, uh, geez, in our warehouse, in a shipping container, in our Pittsburgh warehouse of Silfab solar panels, conveniently manufactured in Bellingham, Washington and made in the USA product. Uh, that was very important to us to extend to our customers, uh, these made in USA options. Our basis of design is using microinverters. I know some of you on this call have Enphase Energy microinverters uh, installed on your solar arrays there. Uh, we feel it gives the homeowner a uh, the most panel by panel uh, monitoring option that you can have to monitor the success of your system. Enphase is also a USA company. And Iron Ridge, which is the racking system, uh, you know, which goes on top of your roof and holds the solar modules onto it. Uh, also a U.S. company out of California. So that's our major equipment that we're going to be using that we have in stock now. Uh, so while supplies last, I think applies in this case. Slide. And, and probably the part that everybody's most curious about, uh, what's our pricing look like? Uh, so we did it by tiered pricing. If you remember you know, what makes a successful co-op, uh, it is a win-win-win for everybody. So you as a customer should definitely be saving uh, on the cost of your system. Uh, however, that can't come at the expense of us supporting a local thriving small business. So we found a middle ground here that works that generally reflects a 10 to 15% savings from you know, other times of the year. So economy of scale kicks in. The larger solar array you have, the lower that cost per watt and right down the line there. The smaller it is, the higher the cost per watt. Uh, we hope that this is in line with what other quotes are that you may get from competitors. Uh, we always encourage you to get other quotes as a responsible homeowner or business owner. Uh, and that's where coming, that's where your price match, you know, being open and honest with us, letting us know what you got. And we'll let you know if we can match that price. Uh, you know, keep it, keep everything above board out in the light and, and we can usually help people get to where they need to be. Uh, we also are installing ground mounts at a fixed price of $3.30 per watt. Uh, and those systems you know, just tend to be larger than 10 kilowatts. So 
there's some other uh, you know adders and subtractors and things like that when you get into it. And I think we have a link to our our co-op website uh, coming very soon here in this presentation. So there'll be more details on on that site. But in general, this is the the high level block pricing that you can expect to see. Slide. And that is all that I have for you folks. Uh, if there are any questions, I can take them now. And I, I actually see one from Amy. Amy, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, any reason to join if you already have a solar array? That's a tough one. Probably not. I think you know the main reason to join uh, is to you know to pursue adding adding solar to your home or business. Uh, you know, you can certainly join, but I believe all of our past clients are on our mailing list and, and just part of the Infinity family there. So, uh, I see we answered some questions already. One saying, if you have to leave early, can we watch the recording later? You you should receive a link to the recording. Uh, I would say sometime tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly when it kicks out, but I would say sometime tomorrow. And then if you're also interested in energy storage, solar financing, or general tours of, of other solar clients' homes that we've installed in the past to see what it looks like, what their experience was, uh, why they made that decision, we have all of that consolidated on our website. If you go to infinity.com and you go to Go Solar 2022, we do have all of our videos saved. So you can see, you see number four in the title here. That's because there's three other great ones that live forever on the website and on our YouTube channel where we have a lot of drone footage of some really fun projects and our other webinars. Um, I see a question, any battery storage options included mm -hmm. in this co-op deal? So not included in that cost per watt, but Infinity is installing more and more battery options uh, by popular demand. Uh, our go-to, and Andy and Cam, you can correct me if I'm, I'm misspeaking here, uh, is a compatible product from Enphase that works very nicely with their microinverters. Uh, Enphase N-Charge, I believe is the name. Is that a thumbs up, Cam? Uh, they rebranded, so they're now called IQ batteries, but yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we at Nvidia is also Tesla certified to do the Tesla power wall. Uh, uh, buyer beware, Tesla has a really great marketing program, not so great on delivering. I think we probably have half a dozen projects that are waiting for power wall installations. Uh, we have been waiting many, many months for delivery of power walls. So uh, we are designing, uh, quoting, and installing batteries. It's a separate cost uh, onto the, that flat pricing that you saw on the co-op there. And dependent on what your power load is, uh, Scott, that is something to be considered. It's very variable based on what you would like to be backed up. I see, I see one from Betsy there. Uh, will you be installing on individual homes? Yes, absolutely. Um, if not with individual homes, people have battery storage to cover power outages. And again, yes, absolutely. You as a homeowner, uh, you know, have the option to add battery backup to your home. Uh, you know, you know, just speaking honestly, battery storage, it's expensive right now. And you don't always get to back up your whole home, uh, you know, for, you know, sometimes it's more than the solar array itself. So that's, that's probably a little improvement area in the industry is to bring down the cost of battery storage. How about generators as an alternative, Jason? I know that we've spoken about that in our previous webinar, mm -hmm. but Betsy might be interested in um, other backup options. Yeah, I mean, for folks that uh, are really living on an unstable grid uh, where power outages are a real concern, uh, yes, uh, a gas powered uh, Generac generator uh, is also a very good option. We have a question from Aaron. Is the larger center region going to be participating in a larger solar cooperative, one that draws some power from larger solar farms in the state? Yeah, so that's a, um, that's kind of a yes and no answer. Uh, 
so when I referenced the solar power purchasing group earlier, uh, you know, that is the center municipalities looking to offset their, uh, their electricity usage with uh, renewable solar power. Uh, you know, the location, you know, that process is still very early on as to where a potential array would be sited. Uh, that makes the most uh, cost feasible sense for all the people participating. Uh, but stay, stay tuned. Those are, I think, actually also those meetings and both the agendas and the minutes are also posted on the Center Region COG website. They are public meetings since it's made up of public officials and public is allowed to attend. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more there, worth, worth peeking in on that and seeing when the next meeting is. Uh, we have a qu question. Uh, if an array doesn't make sense for us, what about just being able to purchase power from the co-op? Yeah, Amy, good question there. So this is one of the initiatives that has not uh, really made headway in Pennsylvania. So uh, the community solar is the mechanism that allows a community, a group of neighbors, people living in a certain region, to install one solar array uh, and purchase the energy from it. In Pennsylvania, uh, we cannot do that currently. Uh, there has been many uh, legislative bills uh, at our house, our state house and state senate uh, that have just died in committee most of the time. Uh, so this co-op cannot actually uh, install a solar array and sell that power back to anybody other than the person whose home or business it is on. So I do see a question in the chat. We're not going to be able to record the answer live, but I'll just read them aloud. Um, how long do solar panels last or need to be replaced? Cam or Andy, can you let me? I'm a little rusty on warranty periods. I know engineer useful life stuff. Yeah, sure. So any product that Infinity will install tends to have a 25 year product warranty from the manufacturer. Um, additionally, the Silfab panels that are specced in this co-op have a 30 year production guarantee. And I believe it's somewhere around 80%. Uh, I think it's a little bit more 82.6, I believe. Um, now that said, uh, that is what the manufacturer will guarantee out at the end of 30 years. Uh, after that 30 years, production does not just drop off. It'll continue to decrease at a slow rate. Um, so with that fact in mind, it's generally said that solar panels have an engineered life of 35 to 40 years. Um, and at that point, uh, whether or not they need to be replaced at any given point is really just a matter of whether you feel the energy you're getting is worth still having them up there. So. Hope that answers your question. Thank you, Kim. Do you offer solar shingles for new home builds? I believe Tesla offers a form of solar shingle. Yeah, so there's two main companies that offer solar shingles. Uh, Tesla is certainly uh, the brightest and shiniest and the best marketing uh, that's out there. Uh, good luck getting them. Uh, the other is Certainteed, uh, who is an actual uh, roof shingle manufacturer. They were actually first on the market uh, well over a decade ago uh, with solar shingle prototypes. Uh, you know, so the, the thing with solar shingles is yes, you can, you can get them, you can have them installed. Uh, there's some supply chain issues that you would need to be aware of. There's also some power production issues. You know, when you start looking at power produced uh, per square foot, uh, you know, the data that we're, see we're seeing Solar shingles are just far less than traditional solar modules. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to maximize your investment, um, you know, solar, traditional solar panels are still the way to go. Uh, that may change in the future, uh, but as of right now, that, that is the, the general guidance. I would also add that we have been on a list to install the Tesla one specifically, right? Yeah, and they yeah. have not contacted us saying that inventory is available in our area. I 
the only install that I have seen and team correct me if I'm wrong is in Northern California in their test market. Um, and we're, we're not seeing any updated announcements on that product. So yeah. the math doesn't work as nicely and it's not technically released in our area, unfortunately, but solar panels are a better buy at this time. Correct. And I see one last question from Aaron. What, if any, zoning challenges the solar in solar installation uh, present? Yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, you know, there's many challenges facing the solar industry right now. Uh, COVID, skilled labor shortages, material shortages, material lead times, price increases, uh, utility requirements that are being set upon installers. Um, and yes, uh, you know, zoning and permitting challenges as well. Uh, you know, there are each of the uh, municipalities that make up the COG, you know, they all, I believe, have a zoning ordinance for solar now. Uh, and then, you know, if you're doing a ground mounted system, there are setbacks uh, that you have to comply with uh, to get that zoning permit. Uh, and another challenge we're being faced with now is we're getting ready to tr transition into the newest code cycle uh, in about a month. And that code cycle is going to limit, uh, you know, the, the amount of space that we need to live be on the perimeter of a roof mounted solar array, uh, as well as some other, you know, safety considerations that we need to be making. So um, it's not getting easier uh, to install solar, uh, that is for sure, but it is all presumably for uh, the betterment of everybody. We do have one more answer in the chat, or yes, in the chat, or question in the chat. Will the Silfab solar panels still generate energy during winter or overcast days? Yeah, Cam or Andy, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. And uh, thanks for your question, Renee. Uh, that is a very good one, and particularly one that we get a lot this time of year. Um, so, well, I'll break your question into two just to be thorough here. So on overcast days, it is the case that solar will produce. Um, sure, it's not as much as direct sunlight, but uh, it will produce uh, to a certain amount uh, greater than 50% generally. Um, and that is with clouds in the sky. Now, the other, the other part of that question is uh, during wintertime. Um, and the reason for that question is clear is because, you know, we all see snow everywhere. Uh, and now it is true that while there is snow on the panels, uh, the panels will not produce. Um, but that said, uh, in our production estimates made with our modeling software, we do account for snow losses over the course of the year, uh, which would be to ensure that any production figures we give to you will be accurate over that time period. Um, and then just, the other thing to take into consideration is uh, a lot of the time we wind up recommending a product called snow guards uh, for folks. And the reason for that is because the snow and ice accumulations actually have a tendency to slide off too quickly uh, and cause damage on the way down. In, in some instances when there's, you know, important or heavily trafficked areas below, um, but just so you're aware, that is a consideration that we take into account uh, in producing production estimates for that. So thanks for your question. Next question is, uh, if our roof or shingles are 20 plus years old, do you subcontract for roof shingle replacement before installing the solar panels? And I'm going to send that to Andy. Haven't heard from Andy in a while. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good question. Certainly would want to have your roof life line up with the solar panels. We do work with some local roofing contractors and also have some roofers in-house if uh, timing allows, but would also recommend you reach out to your preferred roofer or get suggestions from friends, neighbors, colleagues on roofers that they've worked with. Solar panels can be installed on any roof type. So 
that's not that's not an issue. Um, if you have a vaulted ceiling and you are going to replace your roof and get solar panels installed while the roof is being removed, it may be a good time to do the structural engineering analysis. So just one thing to keep in mind there. Thank you, Andy. We just had two more questions pop up and then we will save any questions after these two for the next Q&A section. Um, I'm going to skip to George's question. Do the snow guards tend to keep accumulated snow on the panels, reducing the output until the snow, the snow finally melts? Any panelists want to take that question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the main part of including snow guards on an array is to slow down the rate at which the snow comes off of them. Um, so do the snow guards keep the snow on the panels? Uh, yes, for a little bit longer, uh, but still not enough to make our production estimates inaccurate. Uh, I hope that answers your question, George. And our last question for this section, George says, yes, it does. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, George. <laughs> uh, last question, what other design considerations need to be addressed for a roof mounted system? Thinking some roofs may not be designed for the additional weight of panels and systems. Related, how did the panels attach slash penetrate to roof finishes, shingles, metal, et cetera? Yeah, I'll take this one. Uh, so, as it relates to loading on your roof, uh, the part of the permitting, there's part of the permitting process that requires a structural engineer review and submittal of a, a stamp letter and drawing set uh, to receive your building permit in order to proceed. So if you're doing a roof mounted system, you know that's part of the process uh, and it has to be signed off of. If for whatever reason your roof is unable to support the that added load of the solar panels, uh, which is typically, well, in my day, it used to be three to five pounds per square foot. I don't, I don't know what it is now. I'm sure it's still pretty close to that. Um, a structural engineer will uh, make a recommendation on how to reinforce that roof to support that extra load. Uh, and that's where working with a company like Infinity comes in handy because, uh, you know, we're an all-encompassing company. Uh, we don't just have solar installers. We have a whole construction team that builds net zero energy houses and does some really high-end work uh, that knows their way around uh, a handful of two by fours to reinforce uh, a roof structure there. So related to how they attach to the roof, uh, solar is a big industry. Uh, there is a product for every single type of roof that you can imagine uh, that would mount on there. Most commonly in our area are shingles. Uh, Therefore, it's, what we're using is basically a piece of flashing, aluminum flashing that slides under your, your shingles, you waterproof around it, it lifts the, the L foot off of the roof. Uh, so it's a watertight uh, perimeter that you attach your racking and then your solar modules onto. If you have a metal roof, which is the second most common roof type here in Central County, uh, there's a company called S5. And if you really just want to uh, break your brain on all the different types of roof attachments so that are out there. Uh, there is a clamp for every type of shape, rib, roof, uh, you know, that attach in numerous different ways. To build off Jason's answer, I think um, if you are concerned about your roof age or the structural integrity of your roof, or you just don't know, um, step one of this process when you talk to either Andy or Cam about a solar site assessment is you know a discussion about roof age then a flyover with the drone to check things out if it's something that they are earmarking as a concern they're going to be really upfront with you honest discuss your options what we wouldn't want you to, to see you do is to do a roof replacement on your own without really including us in the discussion um, while that's something you're obviously open to do, I, I think preparing for solar when you're doing your roof replacement is your best opportunity to not double back on work or have increased costs pop up later in the project. 
um, keeping that line of communication open if you are considering solar and replacing your roof independently is probably your best route to success. So I uh, just wanted to bring that up when if you're not even sure, but you're planning on it in one or two years and, and staggering those projects, I would still talk to us now. Um, definitely worth your time to get those questions answered early. And we'd be happy to talk to you about any of that. This is our favorite topic, solar. So um, with that, I believe it is time to hand it over to Andy Porter. So Andy, take the reins. Yeah, thanks, Candice. We'd like to take a moment to recognize our sponsors. Then we're gonna have some final slides, summary links, contact information, discount codes and offerings, and your chance to win a $250 gift card to a local business of your choice or a local nonprofit organization donation in your name. Uh, the first organization that has been sponsoring these and is near and dear to my heart is the Penns Valley Conservation Association. The springs on my off-grid solar-powered homestead flow into the Penns Creek watershed. PVCA's mission is to serve as a steward for the natural and cultural communities in the upper Penns Creek watershed, seeking to preserve and honor the agricultural roots of Penns Valley by protecting and conserving its waters, farmlands, forests, and rural heritage. They also provide environmental education to Penns Valley students and hold fun and educational events throughout the year, such as Creek Fest and River Songs. Invinity also offers a discount to PVCA members and a matching donation to PVCA up to $1,000. So the details of that are listed there. Uh, please visit their website, follow them on social media and attend some of those fun events and become a member and support environmental education and stewardship in the Penns Valley region. Next, we have Penn Environment. They have also been a sponsor of these events since the beginning. Their mission is to transform the power of imaginations and our ideas into change that makes our world a greener and healthier place for all. They have a volunteer meeting happening via Zoom next week. You can sign up via the link here and get involved. Penn Environment is a big champion of sustainability throughout the state. Uh, please attend their virtual volunteer meeting, follow them on social media, and find ways to get involved with Penn Environment. Another continual sponsor of ours and, and great organization is Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light. As you can see here, they, are been, they have been longtime champions of sustainability. Uh, as you see, their mission they are a community of congregations, faith-based organizations, and individuals of faith responding to climate change as an ethical and moral issue through advocacy, education, energy conservation, energy efficiency stewardship, and the use and promotion of clean, renewable energy. A lot of great events and a lot of active membership and continued support, Pennsylvania Interfaith, Power and Light. State College Young Professionals is another organization that is near and dear. Our very own Candace Bradley is a former president. They are a very active group in our local community. And as you see here in their description, striving to enhance the community by providing an opportunity for professionals to network, volunteer, socialize, and have fun. Uh, speaking from someone who has been to their events, that is all very true. Lots of great networking opportunities for young professionals in the state college area and always fun. And they're always giving back through charitable volunteering and donations. So follow them on the social medias and get involved. State college young professionals. They, they still can't beat the Infinity softball team though. Oh. We cannot, we cannot. In their defense, I think they divide into two teams. That's how powerful they are. So, uh, so without further ado, I would like to pass the microphone off to my friend, my colleague, 
and recently engaged man, Mr. Cam Willison. Oh, thank you, Andy. Great job there, and I appreciate you. I also appreciate everybody else on this uh, webinar for coming out tonight. I hope this has been really informational um, and, that, and that you all are having a good time. Uh, we haven't even seen the Kahoot yet, so get excited for that. But anyway, I got some slides here for you. Um, what makes solo a good investment? Uh, so just a little bit of solo 101 here. Um, obviously the big thing with solo that everybody loves is that you're going green. Uh, but that is obviously the, not only the only benefit or else not as many people will be doing it. Um, so the biggest thing uh, that is available in Pennsylvania, uh, particularly in the first energy companies and as well as PPNL and all those other ones uh, is what's called net energy metering. Uh, basically, this is what allows you to take your solar energy and apply it toward your power bill. Uh, we have a lot of folks who are cutting almost all of their energy uh, expense uh, with solar using that net energy metering. Um, and that said, it is a very case-by-case -case, uh, situation. So if you'd like to see whether you can offset all of your energy, uh, then definitely feel free to reach out and we can help you figure out whether or not that's possible for you. Um, or just to the extent that it is. Um, so the other benefit to solar is what is called solar renewable energy credits. And these are a Pennsylvania incentive. Uh, basically for every 1000 kilowatt hours or one megawatt hour, which for those of you who don't know, those are units of energy. Uh, for every one megawatt hour that comes out of your solar system, you get rewarded with a solar renewable energy credit from Pennsylvania. Uh, you can then take that credit and sell it on a brokered marketplace for a certain amount of money. Um, as part of installation, Infinity will set up all of their clients with an account uh, that they can receive and sell those solar renewable energy credits as an additional source of income uh, in addition to your power bill savings. Um, so, uh, in addition to those first two points, we also have the 26% federal tax credit that's staying in effect for this year. It was in effect last year, and it is still in effect this year as well. Um, it does drop down next year according to the current legislation, although that might change, uh, but we're not sure. Um, and then uh, specific to the panels uh, used in the Infinity Solar Center, Center County Cooperative, uh, the SILFABs, those ones have a 30-year production guarantee by the panel manufacturer out at 82.6%. Uh, so that's just to give you a little bit more peace of mind that your solar system is going to be producing well 30 years out uh, and all the years in between. <laughs> so uh, next slide. Yep, so just... Uh, little sample project here to give you guys a better idea of how the numbers shook out for one of our clients here. Um, before I get into the meat and potatoes, uh, this picture here on the left, that is actually what the Silfab panels look like. They have that slick all black look that people like. Um, yeah, I mean, that's on a brown roof, but you know, still looks pretty good. Looks even better on a black roof, uh, but you know, leave it up to you. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll get into this here. So uh, this is a 8.74 kW solar system on somebody's house. Uh, with their power bill, uh, that solar system was producing 9,979 annual kilowatt hours. Um, and so with their power bill, that was 96% of the kilowatt hours that they were using in a given year. Uh, so that would be what that net energy metering thing is, is they're basically getting rid of buying 96% of their kilowatt hours uh, for the year. Um, and then next, uh, because they're producing that energy with solar, they're also getting rewarded with those 10 solar renewable energy credits, and those will keep coming in every year. Uh, and they can sell those at whatever the rate is at that time, or they can hold on to them and sell them later. Uh, but we leave that up to you. Um, and so, like I mentioned on the last slide, uh, that production guarantee is at 82.6%, just to give you a little bit of peace of mind there. Um, and so just the way that our pricing would shake out for this kind of system, 
And with the above benefits, you can see uh, it's 8.74 kW. So if you were wondering how that translates to actual pricing, uh, 8.74 kW is equal to 8,740 watts. And then you would multiply the watts by $2.80 to get that 24,472. Uh, the federal tax credit will come right off the top uh, dollar for dollar. So basically to get that uh, net investment amount, uh, you would just multiply your 24,472 by 74, or excuse me, 0.74, not, not 74. That would, be, that would not be good. Uh, yeah, by 0.74. And then also just wanted to feature here, uh, our financing provider is Clean Energy Credit Union. They're an awesome mission focused organization. Um, and they have a few different loans, uh, specifically this one with a 20 year system like this would be as low as 125 a month, which is pretty darn good considering that uh, you're not gonna have to worry about paying power bills or power bills going up for the foreseeable future. So yeah. Next slide. Yep. So just a little bit of Q&A here again. Uh, please feel free to voice your questions and we will hop on them. We did have a question during this session that asked if we installed in neighboring counties as well. Uh, the example was Lycoming County. Uh, we, I just wanted to let everyone know here that while this is a center county cooperative we do install in surrounding counties and we definitely have the ability to install in pittsburgh as well in those surrounding areas around pittsburgh we did open an office a couple months ago to service that area it is a pretty awesome area right next to a cookie factory which i'm really excited to visit i recommend if you're in town you drop by eat a cookie talk to david over there um but we do service, I would say, most of Pennsylvania from Harrisburg over. So if you have any questions about that, you can message us. Any other questions before we get to the big kahoot? Going once, going twice, it's kahoot time. So uh, I just wanted to explain how Kahoot works because it can be kind of confusing the first time. Um, what you're going to want to do is open a new browser window or your browser on your phone and go to Kahoot.it. I can put that in the chat for everybody. We said it a while back, but I'll put it right there for everybody. Um, No.org, no.com, .it. So Kahoot.it. Uh, what's going to happen after that is I'm going to give you a game pin. You're going to put that game pin in. You're going to put a nickname in, and then you're going to click OK, ready, go. So I'm going to get that started. And we will have to share a new screen. There might be some fun sounds, bear with me. Does everybody see the game pin? Five, six, one, six, two, two, five. And we, I am seeing some questions pop up in Q&A. We will get to those after the Kahoot. Oh, we got some people really logging in here. I encourage you to use your real name. No, no rush, no, no pressure. Uh, I just need to know who the winner is in the chat afterwards. If you are using a fake name or nickname, uh, I assume our president Sean Party is not actually present. I'm going to say that's Cam, but that's just a guess I have. Um, we're getting a good amount. I'm gonna, I know we have 28 participants. So I'm, I'm 19 have logged in. Um, I will give a little bit more time for people to figure this out. If you have any questions or challenges, you can post in the chat. 
I think it's most fun to play on your phone, uh, but some people like to play in their browser on the tablet. Now, something to consider about Kahoot, not only do you get points for having the right answers, but you also must be the fastest to win. So it is a speed game, but know that some questions have multiple answers and some questions are somewhat tricky. So make sure that you try to read it. Uh, Infinity team members are not eligible to win the gift card. I apologize, Andy, Cam, and Jason, but you, you may play along, but you may not win. No. All right. I see that we have 20. We can get started. What is the GHD reduction goal by 2030? GHD stands for greenhouse gas. Got eight answers. Slowly come trickling in. If you don't know, I would guess at this point. So it looks like we did get four right answers, 35%. Um, 45% would be great for the 10 people that guessed that. That is a high and lofty goal. I hope we will get there in the future. Uh, so those four people will be receiving points. Let's see how we podium. Peter B in the lead, followed by Rainbows and Sons. Amy P is in third place and Chad and Boba slowly coming up in the rear. Uh, we still got a couple more questions to even this out. I've seen it go a lot of different ways, guys. There's still plenty of chances to win. Question two, climate action plan for Senate County targets blank percent transition to renewables for homes by 2030. This is for homes. How many renewable percentages are we hoping for homes by 2030? We got 12 people getting that right. So that's pretty awesome. We are hoping for 10% and I believe it is 15% for commercial, right, Jason? Five, a little too ambitious on my part. How does that affect the rankings? Rainbow and Sons up there taking first place followed by Chad and Kyler, congratulations. We still have more questions. The race is tight. So multiple select question, which is true of the Center County Solar Cooperative? This can have multiple right answers. It is also electric, yes. That is true of the GIF. Nice. So I, I believe you get individual points for each right answer, but I think across the board, everyone was on the same page. How does that affect our rankings? Avery is taking the lead, followed by MC and Lucinda, really shaking things up. I think Jason is somewhere in that ranking. Thank you for playing, Jason. <laughs> or somebody pretending to be Jason. When does the Center County Solar Co-op close for homes and businesses? What is that final date? Not to be confused when the last day to get a solar contract through before the code changes. So you got, most of you got that right. February 28th is the last day for the solar co-op. February 14th is the last day to have a submission of a contract in to avoid the code update. Not a huge deal, but could benefit you depending on what your house is like and the different factors surrounding your property. Something to consider February is a big month for solar. Avery's lead has increased, but we're seeing a little bit of the second, third, fourth and fifth spots shift up. I believe the next one is the last one. So fingers at the ready team. 
What can I do to fight climate change and help solarize PA? Besides dancing like that guy. All of the above, become a solar champion, go local with the so solar company with USA made materials and join the co-op and go solar in general. All great options to help you solarize PA and fight climate change. And this is the final podium. Third place, we have Kyler. Second place, Lucinda. First place is MC. That was actually a huge surprise. I thought Avery was going to win that one. Um, so if you are MC, please drop your contact information in the Q&A or the chat so we can reach out to you regarding your gift card selection. Uh, we do like to support other small local businesses. So we'll give you some ideas or you can choose your own. Or if you are passionate about a nonprofit that you'd like a donation in your name, we are open to that as well. And we are going to shift back. to the main presentation, because we have some final details we'd like to share with you. Oh, okay. That was surprisingly fun, Candace. Did I make that more fun than the last time? I feel very excited about that portion of the presentation. That was great. It's my one contribution. <laughs> and, and it looks like MC was Mary, Mary Connor. So Mary, congratulations. Congratulations, Mary. Um, so we do have some trailing Q&A stuff that I want to get answered real fast, and then we can go over that kind of stuff. Um, I did see some important stuff go through. Can you give some idea of the degradation over time of panels from normal soiling? I'm a customer in Lehigh Valley close to the airport where buildup from burned jet fuel seems to blacken the gutters. It is of interest. Does anybody, I, I'm not, I don't know if we've ever had that question before. Not that question per se. Uh, so step one is soiling loss is a standard loss that goes into the energy model estimate uh, for solar production. So there's usually a uh, loss percentage, I think as high as you know three or 4% in some of the helioscope models that we have, depending on location. Uh, a lot of times, you know, agri being located next to an agricultural field, uh, we'll have higher soiling, uh, having a ground mount system uh, close to agriculture or where there's lawn mowing, things like that, we'll have higher soiling. I'm working on a project in Pittsburgh uh, that is a roof mounted system right next to the seal plant uh, that has a lot of soiling on it. Uh, I do not know the answer uh, for air traffic, though, and what that would look like. So it's mostly a long way of saying I don't know, but I know other things. Okay. Uh, Mary, we are probably going to contact you via email first and foremost, but I can give you a call if you'd like so that we can chat through that. Uh, I will contact you directly probably tomorrow morning just to give you a heads up and congratulations again on your win. With that, we wanna uh, pass it to, I believe we're back to Andy regarding what you can do moving forward and what your resources are to become a solar champion or a member of the co-op. Or if you just wanna be a supporter of solar in this community, like what the top ideas are. So Andy, take it away. Thanks, Candice. And thanks again, everybody, for being here. And congratulations, Mary, on winning that Kahoot and either a $250 donation to your favorite organization or a gift card to a local business. Uh, so for those of you that have a smartphone, we have a QR code here, and you'll get a copy of this slide deck presentation and it'll be available on our website as well but to do a qr code you just open up your smartphone's camera and hover it over the qr code 
and a link should then pop up. So the first thing that'll happen there from that link, it'll provide a number of resources as well as a contact form where you can provide some, some details to us and we will follow up with you and set up an in-person solar site assessment that will involve a drone flight where we will take a few hundred photographs, build a virtual 3D model of your home, create a solar design and uh, provide you with some options and a solar estimate based on our cooperative pricing. Next slide. You can there. also in that page, check out past webinars and our YouTube channel videos. As well as resources for solar champions. So for past clients or people who may not have the opportunity to go solar, you can still promote solar and encourage your friends, family, colleagues, anybody to work with Infinity, and we will still honor the referral bonus and provide you with funds for referring those people. Uh, just some, some information here. I'll give you a moment to digest all of that. And then when you contact us, just mention that you attended this webinar. And as it, as it says there, uh, $500 per referral for co-op members and $1,000 per co-op member who recommends a business. Yeah, we're going to leave this slide up for a while. Um, this is a lot. This is kind of the summary slide of what you get for attending one of our webinars. Um, that discount code will get you access co-op 2022 to uh, those referral programs, um, the free quote, and also how you can sign up to talk with us. You can also just email solar at infinity.com. That's pretty easy as well. You can call that number below if you're a phone person. And Andy and Cam are very much phone people. Uh, bless you guys. Uh, they're on the phone all day answering questions like this. And if anybody has any follow-up questions um, towards the end of this that you would like us to answer, you know, we're going to stick on for a little bit and leave this screen up so that we can answer your questions and you can jot down those discount codes and those benefits. Um, we're really excited to put this program together. And I just want to thank the team for putting so much time and energy into preparing their slides and making sure that people thoroughly understand what's going on in solar right now because it it is all over the community and various resources and as you can see they've really consolidated consolidated all of that information in a great way to share that with you tonight so thanks guys i'd also like to say big thanks to candace and acknowledge all the hard work and effort that you've put in to organizing this event and previous events and making this all be educational, fun, and to go very smoothly. So thanks, Candice, for putting on oh, a great, thanks, another Andy. great event. And if you're still with us, we always take suggestions for topics. We are looking for a topic uh, for next quarter. So our next webinar will most likely be in the March, April timeframe. Uh, we're thinking about doing electrifying your home on how to go 100% electric and offset that with solar, but we are open to suggestions. If you have something that you're dying to learn about and want other people in the industry to share their knowledge and also research the questions they don't know, we've partnered with um, other companies in the past for solar storage yes we do it but here's somebody who actually makes the batteries that can speak on this topic that was a fun one that's recorded in on our go solar 2022 page of our website um and also solar financing we've had clean energy credit union come on here and answer some really valuable questions on how they're making solar more accessible to the masses as you can see from cam's example you know you can replace your power bill with a solar loan and really see the benefits and pay off that solar within a good amount of time pretty effectively. Um, 
you know, my home is you know, a smaller traditional home in the state college area. And if my power bill fluctuates from say 120 to 210, and it would be nice to really offset that with a clean energy credit union loan and start seeing the benefits of solar at my house. I'm on the list, I'm on the wait list. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. I see that you've responded to the uh, to the chat. Good to see you. We will stick on for about five more minutes. Thank you, Mary, for attending. I see you in the chat. Have a great evening. Thank you to Aaron. Uh, we do have one question popping up, gentlemen. Uh, what is the ballpark pricing for snow guards? And um, I'm going to actually pull up our solar co-op page link and share that with the group with all the pricing details just so it lives forever somewhere. Um, ooh, what happened? Yeah, Cam or Andy, do you guys have a, a typical cost range for snow guards? in mind there yes that will totally depend on how large your array is as well as how many rows because we'll need to put more if there's more rows of panels and like over what location so <laughs> sum it up it's pr 